What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be playing around with a title called Laysara Summit Kingdom. This is kind of like an interesting one. It's a hard one to get a finger on the pulse of because it's a city builder where you are trying to go up to the top of a mountain and create a giant religious horn that will blow to stop the apocalypse. You see all that misty stuff down below? That's kind of like choking people out and making crops die and making people get sick and die as well. And so your goal is to create an economy that will get you all the way up the mountain to the top. And then once you've made it to the top, you build the ultimate goal, which is a temple with a big horn that blows or whatever. And hopefully that will dispel the apocalypse. Today we're going to take a look at the game for about 30 minutes. See if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list. Or if it doesn't look like the kind of game for you, that's totally okay as well. But let's dive straight on in. The link to the game is down below in the description. It's currently in early access. It seems to be a reasonably meaty early access. There's about nine maps on this game with the needs of your people being different on every single map. And every map also providing like a different logistical challenge that you have to get across. Uh, so some mountains have ridiculous like really long transit distances that you've got to figure out. Some maps, they have very limited space. Some maps have, like, their resources isolated in weird spots. And you gotta figure out how to get them from point A to point B and play the game. Like, there's lots of little head-scratching challenges in this game that you're gonna have to figure out. It's a little bit of a thinker. You can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream down below, just in case you wanted to hang out live. But let's go ahead and get started. So as I mentioned, we're trying to build our way up the mountain, and the beating lifeblood of every city in this game is the food market. You can't really do anything without it. The goal of the game is to keep your money positive. If your money goes negative, this meter starts to go down, and then I think you lose the game when it gets down to the bottom, but I haven't tanked a colony yet just to find out. But I would guess that's probably what happens. And so anytime you're low on workers or low on certain things that the game wants you to have, this number is going to go down. It also goes down when you build various buildings because they have upkeep that you have to maintain because everything in this game is apparently subsidized by the government and so it's a constant push and pull between like what kind of space do I have versus what kind of money do I have versus what kind of workers do I have versus what is the geography doing and like I said it's a thinker if this game in the first hour or two doesn't have you sitting there doing nothing like looking at it being like how do I fix this issue and like moving buildings around and being like huh what do I do with this situation because I'm hosed right now? It's that kind of game, kind of mixed with Anno. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to even out the amount of workers that we have. So let's even out the amount of workers that we have very quickly. And it looks like we can fit that stuff all in right there, so that should be perfectly fine. Uh, each of these houses is going to have needs that need to be fulfilled. We'll probably want to build a bridge across this chasm, like right now would be my guess. We might as well just do that. Let's put a bridge across. There we go. A bridge has been put across that little gully right there so that people don't have to like stub their toes or injure themselves to get on over there. Now, these guys have needs that need to be fulfilled. If you're not fulfilling those needs, these buildings will not upgrade. When they upgrade, they pay more taxes, which makes this number go up, and they give you more workers of the type that are assigned to that district. The buildings also feature a type of clumping which I think is very good. When you put buildings adjacent to each other, they clump. I'd like to see that extended to buildings vertically as well, where they connect with little things. Uh, the buildings are randomized. They all don't look the same, but you will see some repeats as you go through the game. So, for example, this district over here looks pretty much the exact same as this district over here. I'm guessing it just looks at the position of the buildings. And guesses what random building you're going to want in there. They're probably going to want to expand the amount of building models and randomize it a little bit further to break apart the visual monotony. But our market is distributing to all these people, so we should be good on that front. It looks like these people want Sampa, which is kind of like a bread, I guess. It's made out of wheat. I don't really know anything about uh, Sampa. I don't know what it is. They want cheese, they want Sampa, they want eggs, and it looks like they also want utensils. Uh, so we're gonna have to figure that out before these guys will upgrade. These guys are actually kind of needy. They want all kinds of stuff. My last colony, they didn't want this many things, but they wanted more complicated things. So the eggs are reasonably easy. Uh, the eggs are not going to be a challenge. We should be able to just fire that off right now, and we'll send that to market. There we go. Eggs are being sent to market, and we're satisfying the need. We only have 4.8 demand for eggs right now, so we've got a little bit of overhead left that we can play around with. That need has been fulfilled, however. 
And they want a second need from tier one, be that cheese or be that wheat. Wheat is kind of costly when it comes to... When it comes to space, cheese is going to be a little bit easier to produce. The downside with cheese is that we're going to have to have excess yaks in order to make that happen. So that is also not a really great option. Uh, these starting little paddocks that we got right here are going to be a little bit tiny for us. Looks like we've got an avalanche coming down the mountain too. Yes, if you have buildings in the way of this avalanche, so let's say there was buildings right here, they get destroyed. Uh, there is a logistical chain that allows you to eliminate the avalanches. You basically build tree barriers across the top of these. It's very, very worker intensive. But it does supply you with lumber, which is useful for other commodities. So it's not like you don't get anything out of the deal. You get lumber and also you don't die. Uh, so for Sampa production right here, this is going to get a little bit messy. I'll probably put these in right here. And then in order to make that work, I've got to have a mill. That's going to require two yak force, though, in order to make it happen. So now we have a yak deficit that the game is upset about. We'll send these guys to send their wheat over to here. Wheat has been sent. And then we will send the samp up back to the town center. And as you can see, we've now fulfilled that need. The next thing that we're going to need is they need enlightenment, and that enlightenment comes from a thing called a shrine. They need prayer spots. The prayer spots should not be that difficult to bang out, I don't think. So what I'll try to do is we'll try to do it like this way. And that has fulfilled all of their needs right there. And then this one's kind of like a wild card. Anything can go on in there, but it wants cheese. Uh, that seems to be the easiest thing to mash together right now. The downside is we're going to have to figure out this yak deficit situ situation that we've got going on right now. We've got kind of a, a bovine deficit happening. The good news about yak farms is that yak farms can kind of go anywhere, and they just give you, like, universal yak. And so... I'll probably just make some universal yakage right there just to get that done. Because there's not much that we can do with this upper tile anyways. There's not really much that we can put right there in order to make this all function. So, like, who cares? I guess would be sort of my initial meandering thought about it. We can get more houses in right there. How are we looking on most of our consumption? Most of our consumption looks pretty good. So we're probably in a spot where we can put in some more worker houses. So I will do that. And then we'll cross our T's and dot our I's right there. Oh, a road can't go across right there. Unfortunate, but we can kind of make it reach right there. Uh, you can't rotate buildings in this game. I think this is a particular weakness of the game. You should be able to rotate buildings. So this is a game about careful central planning where you're trying to figure things out as you go to maximize the amount of mileage that you're getting out of every single building tile. And for whatever reason, a big oversight here seems to be that there's no building rotation, which means that you end up with like gaps from time to time that you would very much like to fill, and in fact would be filled if you could rotate buildings, but there's no building rotation inside the game right now, which is kind of weird. Uh, we do need to get Lowlander Huts up to level 2, and so that's going to mean that we need a cheese market out here. So for the cheese market, we have the yaks for this. It should not be that big of a deal to bang out. Some of this is going to come down to our distribution network, though. So I'll put those right there, and they're now producing milk. We also need to have cheeseries. However, we need to have like three cheeseries in order to get this done properly, because these are putting out 18, and each cheesery is consuming six. And so if we really wanted to get the most bang for our buck, we kind of need to have more cheeses around here. Uh, so let's go back on into this area. We can put a cheese area right there, and we can put a cheese area right there. I don't know if they're all going to be able to reach the central market, so that might be a hill that we have to get over. 
But for now, we can kind of just send what dribblings of cheese we have over in that direction in order to make it happen. That's not in range, so we're going to need to figure out a way to get that crossed over and make it happen. My suggestion would be that right there, which still doesn't get it there, unfortunately. I was really hoping I would not have to build a distribution center here. I can move it to right there, and it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so I'm probably going to have to do a distribution center here. Uh, so what's going to happen is we need a splitter. So there are splitters in this game, and they work exactly how you think they're going to work. So you take a carrier post like this guy right here. You put him in right there. And let's say that I needed stuff to make it a little bit further. Instead, we would send this to here, and then it would send to right there. And that would get us our cheese that's now going to the center. Do we have enough cheese for everybody? We have enough cheese for everybody, and all of these are ready to go up to level 2. So let's collect all of our free workers very quickly. Is there an upgrade tool that allows me to do this faster? It looks like I can just click on the icon. Okay, that's perfectly acceptable as well. What's wrong with these guys? Oh, they don't have a prayer network. All right. And as you can see, that has given us an enormous quantity of now lowlanders that we can employ anywhere. There's no limit on where your lowlanders can go. You can put them wherever you would like them to be. Uh, do we have a connector over here that'll take us anywhere? So that goes up to rock crystal deposits up there. Over here, what I'm kind of looking for is copper. So our first copper mines are actually way off on the side over there. So we're going to have to come up with a complex logistical chain to get us there. Uh, so we're going to need to build a shaft that goes up to there. We're going to need a road that runs down to here. We're going to need a road that runs over to here. And then we're going to need a bridge that crosses right there. And that will get us to our copper mines. Uh, there are storylines in this game. I'm just going to click through them real fast because I don't care. Uh, but the game does have really nice animations. The tutorial has like a long video that kind of like introduces you to the world and sort of pitches the ambience and pitches the setting to you, which was actually very, very well done. There is dialogue. There is animation inside of this game. It's clear that someone has spent a lot of money uh, to kind of make this game presentable and get it going. Just in case that's the kind of thing that you're worried about. And we do need more yak farms over here. The good news is we basically have, like, the amulet of infinite yak right now. I don't know if I'll be able to fit anything in right here. Yeah, it's just not large enough. All right, we'll put in two more yak farms right there because I'm swimming in lowlanders right now. So, like, it's not really that big of a problem. I would very much like to tax these lowlanders. And it looks like I can fit a tax base right there that'll hit all of them. That will take our money up, but we are hiring right now artisans to come out and function inside of this place. But even so, we're collecting so much money from all these buildings over here that it's not really going to matter. We still came out about $200 in the positive, despite the fact that we had to hire workers over on that side. And as we build up those workers, this will go down, this will go up, and then we should be okay. The reason why is actually let's stamp out one of these artisans right here and figure out what they want. So artisans, what do you want right now? What makes your life better? What makes you all tick? Uh, so for our artisans at the moment, it looks like they want a food, so that's fine. It looks like they want two sources of prosperity, so that's going to be baths and utensils most likely. And then they want three needs of any category in order to go up to level three and it looks like they'll take shrines like it looks like they're okay with shrines which makes life a little easier because shrines are an expensive way to fulfill a religious need that, that's pretty much it they have like a decent sized drain on your commerce and revenue but they're easy to set up and they're not like a pain in the ass so what we're going to need to do over here is we're going to need to put in another city center uh, the good news is we're not gonna have to do we're not gonna have to do a lot of shipping and like moving things around on this side, I don't think. I think that like right there would probably be the best place for it, either that or right here. We do have long distance transports we can use to get the stuff that the artisans are making back to a centralized market. 
so it should be okay. We'll put that in right there. And then the next thing we're going to need is a commodity supplier, which we'll probably stamp out right there. We'll bring this down on this side. We're going to build a copper mine right underneath this guy. Like so. It's not connected to a road right now, but it will be. It will be. We'll take that road all the way across. We've already got a river right here, and we're going to want to keep this clear for baths just to figure out like where we want stuff to go. But we've got the copper all set up. That's good. And then we can set up a blacksmith over here to be a coppersmith and just kind of take care of this for us. We'll send that over to there. Unfortunately, we don't have the distance to make it back to the commodity supplier. So that's not going to work out in any real sense. But we do sort of want to get these artisans going because our economy is looking a little bit mangy right now. So let's get these guys going right here. And as long as that reaches, we should be okay. That's going to alleviate a little bit of pain and suffering on account of my poor central planning. We'll put those guys in right there, even though it's not inherently super efficient. No, we won't. Never mind. I think the best way to do this is probably just the way that I have been doing it, which is just build a road right there. So now you see our numbers gone up because we have artisans. We're not having to hire them from out of the kingdom anymore. But... These guys are going to want eggies. That's easy. We can bang that out. They're going to want cheese. That's also easy, breezy, cheesy. So we should be able to knock that out as well. I'm going to use this area just for yak farming, dude. Like, I I see no other use for this land down here. Except for just an easy way to generate infinite yakage. Uh, let's move this over to... We'll probably do a similar batch of buildings up here. We'll take that up and over. So now we have more than enough artisans, and we've ended up actually kind of exactly where we were. But when I put another building in over here to collect taxes from the artisans, it should go up a little bit. And we haven't even played around with the third batch of human beings, right? Is that an avalanche right there? Oh, I didn't realize that was an avalanche spot right there. That's not great. That could be really bad. Uh, we're going to want to reconfigure things here for a second. Hold on. I got to reconfigure like this entire area. And in reconfiguring, this might get a little messy. So we need like a snow barrier right here. Otherwise, bad things are going to happen. The good news is it's only going to take a couple of lowlanders to get this done. Can I scooch that up a little bit? No. I don't like it offset like that. It weirds me out. Uh, these are unfortunately producing wood that's like going nowhere. But we'll figure... We're in the Artisan District. I'm sure it'll be fine. Uh, I don't know if that's going to fully protect us from the avalanche or if it's just going to re-divert it. But either way, hopefully it works out. We had to adapt on the fly because I didn't see that avalanche spot over there. How far does that distribution go? Like two more houses out? Okay. That'll work for me. Two more houses out is fine. Now these guys, they all want eggies and they want some other stuff. If I do long-distance transport, I could use this for multi-purpose farming down here. So let's say that, like, I want to make this work because I actually haven't figured... I haven't fiddled around with long-distance transit too much yet. And so I would like to fiddle around with long-distance transit. We can't do long-distance transit yet because we need a cart post in order to do some of this stuff. And the cart post requires us to be at research level 1, and we're at research level 0 right now. So we're actually going to have to do this quick and dirty the way that I did not want to do it. Because it uses up space. But, that's fine. We'll make it work. Uh, let's get our eggy production over here. A solid supply of eggy in a basket is probably a good addition to any society. Everybody loves eggy in a basket, dude. Eggy in a basket's the best. All right, so we've supplied enough eggs. Eggs are looking good. The artisans are happy, and they're at least eating. We don't have, like, mass die-offs on our conscience. The other thing they wanted is more cheese. It's going to get a little bit more complex, but it does keep things simple. Uh, we do have a river over here that will give us access to a bath. 
which I think was a big thing for them that they really, really wanted. So we've got terrace baths over there now, and that should be supplying bath water needs so that we're no longer a bunch of bath waterless bitches. Uh, let's go over and we need to get a yak shack. Uh, several yak shacks, in fact, would probably be the way to do this. It looks like my yak shacks will work right here. Connect that with a road. And it looks like we can get cheeses over there, cheeses over there, I think. We're still going to have, like, some unutilized output, which is unfortunate, just for, like, OCD. See, this right here, not having rotation in the game is a big irritation, dude. The game should have rotation. Since it's a game about optimizing space and putting things in smart spots, it should really have rotation. Like, the creativity of the game, I think, would go up considerably if you could rotate things. But either way, let's send our milk over here. Send that over there. Uh, these guys require two of any other need. It says that they'll take prayer, which I think is a really good idea. We haven't output anything with these guys yet either. That distribution network will go all the way over to there, and so we're going to need to make a carrier post. So we're going to need to move this guy over to here. In fact, I can scooch him by one more tile. Like I said, it's a fiddly-diddly game. Uh, we can get them over to there, which would then... I need this to get to, like, there. And we're so close. We're so close. So I think our solution here is probably a carrier post. They're kind of expensive. But they will make this work. Usually, you use these carrier posts as splitters. So you would have, like, multi... So what is this using right now? It's receiving one. So normally, like, what you would do... This guy is outputting four. And we're only utilizing one of it with our output. What a carrier post does is that it's effectively a conveyor belt splitter. You can use this building right here. And let's say that I moved this building over to this side... Then, I could say, send that to the carrier post. I could say, send that to the carrier post. I could say, send this to the carrier post. And it will become a splitter. Where I can send this to different mines so that we have more utensil output. That would be the smart and efficient way to do this. Uh, that would, in my opinion, be the best way to do this. Because then I could put a bunch more of these utensil makers over here. And then we would have even more utensils. We could hook that up to a yak cart. The yak cart allows you to send things between different levels. So we could send that all the way back over to here. Thus supplying them with a prosperity need that they are desperately in need of. Uh, these guys at tier 2, I'm not exactly sure what they want just yet. Probably a mandala would be my guess, but there's not a lot of building space over here. So these guys might actually just stay at level 2. I don't know if I would actually work them all the way up to level 3 or not, or if I would just go over here and build a bunch of civilian housing over on this side to get my lowland workers up. I don't know, but either way, to the point that I was talking about, this is, this is a resource splitter. It allows you to do different stuff, but with the way that I had it, over here, uh, I was just using it as a leapfrog just to get this stuff in so that I could upgrade everything to tier 2. That was pretty much just what I was trying to do. I was doing a quick and dirty solution rather than what the game actually wants you to do. Because the quick and dirty solution gets me success right now. Uh, if I put these guys in right here, that'll take us up to 312 for the moment because we're now collecting taxes. Upgrading each one of these will then make our lives a little bit better. We've gotten through there, and so now we need 60 monks that have access to scholarship. Don't know precisely how I want to do that just yet, uh, because monks, they take up a lot of space. Like their temple complexes and their fortresses and stuff like that, they take up a big floor print, and so these guys are actually a little bit of a problem. 
I would prefer to use this entire area for logistics between this area and this area. And I would also prefer to use this area for just kind of like extra things that I can't fit other spaces that I then use yak carts to get around. The good news is that with this objective right here, monks are the ones that generate knowledge and bring you up the tech tree. So that will also be helpful. I've got a connector right there that I can throw in. I've got a connector right there that I can play around with. We'll break that real fast. Is that crooked? That kind of looks crooked to me. Does that look crooked to you? I don't want any I don't want anything crooked around here. All right. I want everything looking nice and straight. I think it might just be the perspective. I don't know. But it is cool how your little city comes together. Like when you begin the beginning of the project and you kind of end up doing other stuff. Like, I tend to get caught up in the building stamping and just fooling around with things, and the next thing you know, you've got like half of a mountain filled out. This right here is a really great area. It's got copper. This would be a really good residential spot over here, I think. And then just use this for like excess yak storage. It might also be a good place for us to do our initial monk building since we don't have a lot of space, but we could try out the monks over on this side. So if we put down monk houses, what do they want? So monks, uh, they want access to utensils, okay. They want access to cheeses and things of that nature. They want access to the baths as well. How far out do the baths transport? It's not really much to matter because I can put another bath on this side. We can take this related industry and we can put it all on a road back here and then use a chain of carrier posts until we get yak unlocks to take things where we want them to go. There's a lot of mental like gymnastics you have to do with this game. It's definitely a brain teaser. You can also upgrade roads to make transit distances longer. The downside is uh, you're going to have to pay a premium for that. And so there are like lots and quick and dirty options to get this done inside of this game for however you want things to happen. So I would probably suggest that if we're going to do this, we put these guys down here. They are not going to work for the distribution network over on this side. Although I guess I could stamp out a few more of them on the left over here. I mean, they've already got access to some of the things that they want, so... It doesn't actually seem like that terrible of a decision. Like, I'm just trying to create the amount of monks that I need in order to start building things in other places. So, I feel as though if we've got slots over here, we're already providing most of the logistics required to get this done. I mean, the commodities post is not really putting things at a distance where I would like them to go. But we could upgrade the roads in between there and there. That did get it going. I mean, it worked. Whether or not it's actually a tangible long-term solution, I think, is a bit of a question. If I go in with the tiled roads, will that get it there? That was very expensive, though. That was, like, catastrophically expensive. Okay. I mean, it is covering a much larger area. I guess I'll put another monk house right there. I really wish this was flush right there. We'll put that in right there. And these guys have a lot of needs. Like, they want a lot of stuff before they're going to go up to Tier 2, I think. They've got quite a bit that they want us to fulfill, at least for Tier 3. But that did give us a starting batch of monks that we can play around with. Hey, our tree line worked. All right, dude. We didn't die crushed beneath ice with crippling hypothermia. Good stuff. And we've still got room for more monk houses over here. So let's uh, get going with our monkey business. There it is. Monks have been put in. So the monks are ready to rock. Uh, what's wrong with these guys? They're getting monetary relief. Not enough resources to send. Okay, so we're actually going to have to properly flesh this out now. You know how I said this was a quick and dirty solution? 
Uh, the quick and dirtiness has now gotten all over our hands, so we're going to need to reconfigure this whole thing. That guy can stay right there. I don't know if a carrier place can send to another carrier place, but basically what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to pause the game. We're going to want to move this guy to here. We're going to need to go into our commodities menu. We're going to want to put in four of those so that we actually get the full output. Oh no, I placed the wrong road. Put that road right there. Yeah, they can have dirt roads. Let them let them live with dirt roads for right now. I didn't realize that I still had tiled roads selected. Uh, things are going to get expensive. Especially with like, oh my god. So we're going to road this off. And we are going to catastrophically have terrible things happening in just a second if I don't fix this. The good news is the game has push pause. So when stuff goes wrong like this and you need to like reconfigure your entire economy, it's not really that big of a deal. So we need to make sure that this guy is reaching over here in both directions. We're going to need to upgrade this road right there which is going to get a little bit expensive but it's going to be okay because it allows him to reach we're going to need to upgrade this road a little bit right here although I got to get the angle on it that road's now been upgraded this guy should be outsourcing to there hopefully uh, but for now this guy behold my quick and dirty solution uh, so things got ugly over here until I get up to tier 2 once I get up to tier 2, I can fix this, and I get, like, a new batch of buildings. But for right now, it's just going to be ugly. So I have all of the iron going into this guy. It distributes to those two tool makers. These two tool makers distribute over to here. He distributes to those two, which then distribute on into the market, which has then gotten us net positive and fixed our problem. Uh, it took me probably a good 10 minutes to figure out that quick and dirty solution. And so if you're into these kinds of games where you're solving complex problems while also moving things around the map, I think this is a great game. It's very, very interesting. I don't think it's particularly for me. It's a little bit too puzzly for me. But I did find myself getting into it, so that's a good sign that they're onto something in the respect that I'm willing to entertain a genre that I normally wouldn't play. And there's nine maps. All of the maps have the needs scrambled for every single building and also have different geographical layouts with the resources in different spots. And so the game has a lot of complex problem solving. This is a game for a very specific type of player that likes to min-max the hell out of everything and get the absolute last drop out of every single map. Uh, that they play onto. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, there's room for that. It's an original little title, and there's not a lot of originality in indie games right now. There's just people, like, you know, copying the last greatest thing and then, like, adding one extra mechanic to it, which has really become kind of exhausting as a guy that covers these types of games. Uh, but I'm digging it so far. I don't know if it's a game that I would dump huge amounts of hours into. I don't know if it's the type of game for me. But it is high quality and it is definitely the type of game for somebody. My complaints are largely related to the fact that you can't rotate buildings and yet the game wants you to have perfect placements on like everything. Um, let people rotate buildings. That's, that's about my only observation. And honestly, that's personal preference as well. But I think rotating buildings would be great in this game because there's so many times where I have a slot I could use. If only I could rotate the building. You know what I mean? That out of the way, this is the kind of game that, like, got me thinking. And that's pretty rare. This game's a thinker. And I could feel myself getting drawn into it, even though it wasn't the sort of game that I normally play. Like, I started to feel that OCD, like, I gotta clean up my bedroom feeling when I was trying to optimize on the maps I played prior to this. And that's a very good sign. That means they've tapped into something. And so hopefully you saw this video. Hopefully you liked it. I thought this game was a great bit of fun, even if it's a little bit too puzzly for me personally. I like to have outside actors and building armies and stuff like that. But it is the kind of game you can sit there with like a plate full of toast and a coffee and just really puzzle about how to solve a problem, and that's kind of rare. And so my name is Splattercat. I sift through the file to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today it was Laysara. Tomorrow it will be something else. Thank you for spending your time with me, and I'm going to sign off here.